We're now going to go through some practice problems to test your knowledge on these hormones. Insulinoma is a disorder characterized by a functional tumor in the pancreas which produces excess insulin. Since insulin is high and glucose is low in patients with this disorder, what would the levels of ACTH, cortisol, and growth hormone be? Remember our anterior pituitary adrenal axis. ACTH comes from the anterior pituitary as does growth hormone and cortisol comes from the adrenal gland. If insulin is high, the body will want to regulate it to increase the blood glucose levels. Therefore, ACTH, growth hormone, and cortisol levels would all be high. Hypopituitarism is a disorder characterized by the destruction of the anterior pituitary by disease or trauma. In this case, ACTH is low, so what would the levels of cortisol, growth hormone, glucose, and insulin be? If ACTH is low, cortisol would also be low because its re release would not be stimulated. Because the anterior pituitary is destroyed, growth hormone would not be produced and glucose levels would be low because of the low levels of bro both growth hormone and cortisol. And in turn, the low levels of glucose prevent insulin secretion from being stimulated. Therefore, growth hormone, ACTH, cortisol, glucose, and insulin levels would all be low. Last one, Addison's disease is characterized by the destruction of the adrenal cortex by disease or trauma. Here the cortisol is low, so what are the levels of ACTH, glucose, insulin, and growth hormone? I'm going to have you walk yourself through this one so you can really test your understanding, but remember where the destruction is occurring. In this case, ACTH would be high, glucose and insulin would be low, and growth hormone would be high. 